Uh, call this uh, lecture be as good as ASOS because clearly they're doing lots of things right. And so I thought uh, let's just try and get into it. Now, some of the screenshots you might see are not up to date because I've done this earlier, uh, this during the summer, so they've updated the website. But most of the features are going to be the same. There won't be much of a difference. But the whole idea is to try and understand uh, their business model. So. What we're doing today is that we're trying to see uh, why these things work with ASOS and what are the things that they're getting right most of the time. Okay, let's just look at some of the numbers behind the scene. Of course, in the last year they made 238 million revenue, so there is an M missing in there. It's definitely not 238 pounds, okay, because that wouldn't be good enough for them. Um, they have around 2.8 million Facebook fan pay, uh, fans. So from last year, from last year, uh, they had about 45% increase in their online fans. Right? And that comes as a result of their continuous engagement with the fans on with online, but also delivering and giving freebies and discounts and things like that to their fans online. Because remember, to get something back, you have to give something, right? So as a business, you give something to the customers and then you get something in return. So it's give to get, right? And the perfect tool to do that is, of course, social. And we, we've covered this in our social networking module, but we'll, we'll talk about it, I'm sure, again. But it, it, it's the best tool, it's the best communication channel you can do, uh, you can use to, to do that. Uh, of course, with the followers as well, I think they've increased followers around 65% from the last year. So you're looking at a really active social, uh, be well, social media kind of uh, improvement from ASOS recently. Uh, now, let's look at some of these things. To understand the business model of any e-commerce site, you've got to look at some of these things, right? Because they just give you an idea about how do they do with product modeling? How do they organize it? How about the stock availability? Remember, you should not be selling things that you don't have in your warehouse. Now, how do you do that? You've got to make sure that uh, the system that you're using in the warehouse is, of course, connected and synchronized live with live updates with your front end, which is your e-commerce website. Now, Richard has talked to you about the uh, components of, and infrastructure of the e-commerce site. You should be able to link this with, with that, okay? So now we're talking about the front end, but of course, everything is linked to some sort of uh, back-end process. The next thing is, of course, shipping costs. You need to know how much are the shipping costs for any business that you're doing online. Because that can really make or break the business. And that, that, that's how big it is. Now, if I tell you that Amazon, just in the last 12 months, they kept losing lots and lots of money, like millions, according to Bloomberg TV the other day, just by giving free shipping. However, they covered that with some other areas of their business. But offering sh free shipping is not always a great idea. But of course, it's a trend. Every other e-commerce business is trying to do it, and of course, if you want to compete with them, you've got to think about giving uh, offer free shipping. But of course, for the business, that can be a killer because shipping is always very, very expensive. Now, depending uh, on what you sell online, for instance, for Ocado, shipping is super expensive. Imagine of selling uh, selling products like wine and things like that. How expensive can they be? And that's why they don't offer a free shipping. But what they do offer is that a membership fee that you could pay to be able to get the free, well, free shipping. You paid for it, but you pay slightly less because you become a member of their, of their uh, community, right? And you could do slightly similar thing with Asda Online as well. Do we have anyone who buys uh, shops online on Asda? Most of you shop in the store. But if we have anyone, you'll probably realize that you can do the same thing with us. You can pay up to, I think it's 30 pounds for three months. 
unlimited free delivery online. So you would pay £30 and you'll get a free delivery for three months anytime you like. You just buy a bottle of water and it'll deliver to you. And I, and I think it's quite interesting, but of course it's not free because food is heavy. And that's why being able to see an e-commerce site that is offering you free delivery it's, it's, it's quite, quite a challenge. Now, when ASUS went for it last year, and I've got a friend who worked there as well, um, when, they went, when they went for free shipping worldwide, internationally, that was the biggest decision they have ever made. And according to, to their CEO, he was really scared that that was going to, you know, really affect the business big time. And it did, but the volume made that work. Because they sell so much, they could afford to do that, but they still lose lots and lots of money. Because shipping is a very sensitive part of e-commerce, because it's still very, very expensive. Right? So it's good to keep that in mind. The next thing is pricing. You need to know how much you're going to sell these things for, right? Because when you know the pricing and you know the cost of the shipping, of packaging, um, having or running, <coughs> excuse me, running the warehouse and all of these things, you can start to tell what is your profit margin. Now you learn this throughout these three, four years at university. That's absolutely essential to know what is the profit margin of any type of uh, product that you're gonna you're gonna inter be interested to sell. This is when you're gonna start to see whether it does make sense to have a typical business model that works. Now, for every business you're going to do, you're going to start to calculate things based on the expenses you have. The next one is shopping cart. Like, how does the shopping cart work towards everything in the in the e-commerce site? How well the shopping cart is synced to what you're trying to do? Whenever you add something into the box, it does that reflect, uh, reflect straight away. When you delete something, does that automatically update the the overall cost in your shopping basket? Right. How easy it is to delete or update or increase the number of products you want to buy? Is that done automatically? Do you have to go and update that yourself? Now these are all the questions that you might want to raise, all the questions that you might want to ask. And in fact, these are some of the questions you can bring in in your, uh, in your assignment as well when you review different e-commerce features, right? Because there's so many details and elements within every feature that you can talk about. Next thing is, of course, search. We're going to look at the search facility in the website. Now, search is an important element. Why? Because it improves that customer journey, right? If, you, if you're uh, in an Amazon website, right, then they have hundreds of thousands of products. How can you tell and how, can, how easy it is for you to find the product you're looking for? Now, you can go and find, I don't know, uh, electronics category and then go down to the mobile and find an iPhone, whatever you're looking for, right? But that means sometimes going three, four clicks, or as we, as we say, three, four steps down in the e-commerce website to be able to, to, be able to find that, that uh, product. With the search, that could aut automatically require you one search of the item, one click, and that's it, you're in the product. And that's the importance of a search facility in, in the e-commerce website. Now, search can be a feature on its own, right? Because there are so many search features in, um, in e-commerce sites that don't do anything, right? You go and search for it, you hit, you hit enter, and then you don't get anything. It says no results. It's like searching for an iPhone in Amazon and it doesn't give you anything. You'd be like, how come? Yeah. It, it's almost worse if you've got search within your site and you're hoping to find a particular product. Sometimes they're so bad that you might as well go out to Google and search for the product to get to the right page within that site. So we have two separate search things. One, which we covered in a previous week, which was search engine optimization, searching in Google or Bing or Yahoo. And this search, which is searching within the site. So the site has got a search button to help you search for their products. Surely they must know what products they have. Or is their search algorithm so bad that it can't really find things? So what, <clears throat> what strategy are you going to take as the owner of a website to have your internal search 
thingy, box, button, to find things so that users get what they're looking for. Thank you, Rich. That, that's really good. Now, when you think about this, think about how this is helping out with the journey, right? You've got to have people coming into your website and you've got to use every possible feature you've got in the website to make that process as easy as possible. And that's why we decided to ask you to work on features for your first assignment. Because it's a really important part of an e-commerce site. You end up most of the time uh, searching and browsing on a very nice, well-designed website. But when it comes to details and to the features, you're stuck. Because you can't get anywhere. And that's when these companies start to lose money. After they invested so much in design, um, developing, everything else. Testing and making sure that it's live to you. So that is an important thing to keep in mind. Next one is payment. What types of payment do you, do you accept as a business? That's an important element. Why? Because that could really be uh, something that can either stop or help you reach out the goals you have as a business. Because if you're accepting PayPal and not accepting any other credit card, then you're limiting yourself. Because there might be people who say, I don't have a PayPal account, I have a credit card account. I, I have a credit card, so I want to use that. So having multiple choice payments is always an important element when it comes to your website. But then, does it work? Is that synced well with the payment and with the product? When you sign in with your PayPal account, and then you accept him to pay for it, is the browser <coughs> automatically going to return you back into your e-commerce site to confirm that you actually purchased the product? There are <coughs> companies who haven't done a very good job with this, so as soon as you're paid using PayPal, you're kind of stuck with PayPal. And they don't bring you back into the e-commerce site to show you that, to give you a confirmation, you have just purchased, you paid for it. So now the product would be prepared and then shipped to you. Okay? Yes? Uh, I didn't really catch all the what would you ask for. Can you repeat that? Like, you know how you said that there's something about sites that leads you to a different like to paper and yeah. you just stay in the paper <coughs> don't go back to the original yeah. paper on their site. I think you did this guy and fill up something more and they kind of like have a small box for the show. Okay, the, the, the comment is about how eBay has integrated PayPal within their payment, within their platform. And the reason why they've done that, that, so that you don't have to go to PayPal to pay for the product and go back into e-commerce site, is because uh, eBay owns PayPal. It, it, it's their own business, right? So, in other words, that's, that's what made, uh, made uh, Elon Musk super super rich guy back then when, when he's created PayPal. So, PayPal is owned by eBay, and so for them it's slightly easier to integrate because they want everyone to be using PayPal, right? And so, they can do that because it sits within their own business model and within their own umbrella for their own life. However, with other businesses, it's still not there yet. The other businesses, they will get you out to PayPal, and you will be in a PayPal payment website, but then as soon as you confirm automatically, they will, they will get you back to the website, to the e-commerce website that you're purchasing from, with a confirmation telling you that you've just paid for that product. But of course, you see, these are small elements, but they can make or break a sale, and it's an important thing. Merchandising. Marketing, of course, an important bit, like how are you going to tell the world you exist? We, uh, uh, we will be talking about the marketing as well because it's an important element of e-commerce. Customer service, innovation, complexity. So these are some of the things that we're going to look through in this lecture. Now, product modeling. There are so many things that businesses need to think about with the product modeling. There are so many things that they need to be aware of. Now, when it comes to ASOS 
they have got a very good way of doing it. But of course, question that you might ask yourself, what type of products have you got? What data around the products you have got? How can you tell which product is which? How heavy is X or Y? You know, how you are you going to make sure that they are up to date with your uh, content management system that you're using, right? To manage these products, these these uh, services that you might have, right? How many units and quantities you have? Now, everything on this needs to be replicated in that uh, CMS or customer, uh, customer man well, management system that you've got, right? Because that one will be the backbone of the business, right? And whatever you see in front of the website, that is a replication of what you have in, in the warehouse. It should be a replication of what you have in, in the store, right? But then you need to know with, how can you make sure that you display them correctly in the website. Of course, navigation recommendations, right? So if, if customers search for a product that you don't have, do you have a feature in the website that can recommend them the second choice? And if you didn't have that, you missed out on that customer. But if you did have that, that means that you can offer them something and chances of you to sell him or her a second product, uh, a suggested product, is, is quite high. But if you didn't have that, you didn't have a choice. Right? So it's an important element. Do you have that with an e-commerce site? Does an e-commerce site have a good and clear recommendation if, uh, if you're trying to buy, I don't know, an iPod and it, it recommends you a Samsung, a Samsung phone? You probably won't be interested because you're interested in an iPod. Uh, or you're buying in Okada online and you're interested to buy apples and it suggests you, I don't know, what's a melon, right? Say no, I don't want that. Okay, or you're looking for uh, peaches and they suggest you chocolate, right? They don't have peaches left in the warehouse. They say, okay, can we give you chocolate? They say no, I don't want chocolate. I want to be healthy, right? So, in other words, do you have that feature? Do you have the system put in place that could recommend you relevant things? Now, I think a recommendation based on history of purchases is not there yet. Because when you look at e-commerce site now, starting from Amazon and everybody else, they will search on the history of your purchases that you made and they start recommending things. But most of the time they keep recommending you same products you bought. You bought a bike three weeks ago on Amazon, they keep recommending you bikes. Well, how many bikes can you buy? How many bikes do you need, right? Or well, you bought a digital camera, well, you might need maybe another one, but it's unlikely, right? You're not going to spend another 400 pounds to buy another digital camera, right? So, these things, I don't think they're there yet, okay? And a special recommendation based on its history is not there yet. But, a recommendation based on the searching of the product availability, it's, it's quite good now. So, if you look at big sites, whenever they don't have a product, that you're looking for, they'll be, they'll be able to recommend you quite a, um, a similar type of product that might be useful to you. And that's really good because why? If you don't have that, you have, you're missing out an opportunity to convert that, that lead, that customer, that visitor into a sale. And as you can see, of course, if you start searching for things, for instance, in ASOS, you'll clearly, if you search for specific types of product, you clearly will get similar options all the time, which is part of their, of their uh, system. Stock availability. As I said to you earlier, it's absolutely essential for you to be able to buy only things that the company has in the warehouse. There's nothing worth the selling something you don't have. Because that customer is going to be upset. That customer has bought that product because they're preparing for a wedding, for a party or something like that. It's, it's so disappointing, right? You will not want to get back to the website ever again. So, of an availability to make sure that these things are connected, the systems are connected. And only when the systems are connected, they make sense. So the front-end website will not be good enough if you don't have 
the warehouse, the payment in place, the payment the gateway put in place, customer support in place, that are synced and they work very well together. Imagine if you forget about the App Store while you have an iPhone, right? Take out the App Store when you have an iPhone. It's a brilliant piece of technology. It's really nice to use. Fantastic, easy to use, understandable, very intuitive to use as well. But then you're stuck with whatever apps you've got on your iPhone. So unless you've got a, connect, uh, a system that is connected to other services that make sense, it doesn't work. As a standalone thing, will not never work. And that's, that's when Apple took over really with the iPhone after they launched the App Store. That's when lots and lots of other people said, okay, well, if I have 30,000 new applications for my iPhone, I might as well just buy this uh, expensive phone, expensive device, right? And when, when we started to see numbers, 300,000 and half a million apps available, he said, you know, you're never going to go wrong with having an iPhone. It's the same with with e-commerce in that sense, right? If you're going to have systems that work together, if you're going to have a warehouse that's well connected to the front end and also the CMS that you're managing the products and services, then you have got something to, to get, right? And you've got a system that works including the mobile, the front end desktop website and also the uh, warehouse and the other components of the front side. Of course, as I said, substitution for similar products is going to be an essential feature. Now, this is another thing that you could talk about or even review in your first assignment. Okay? A seasonal changes affect availability. Now, you've got to have things that are relevant for every season. And you know how many times companies keep offering you things that are not relevant at all. And you're not interested. It's summertime, it's nice weather, you don't want to be thinking about coats and things like that. <coughs> You want to see something that is going to be useful to you at that moment in time. Shipping. Uh, we've talked about sh shipping, but of course another important element is fulfillment logistics. We haven't covered fulfillment, but we might try to find some, uh, some time maybe in the next lectures to talk about it, because it's an important element. Fulfillment. If you have never heard of it, it means a company needs to fulfill the, uh, the promise that they made to a customer. So you need to deliver on the promise you made to a customer. That's what the fulfillment is, putting it simply. But behind that keyword only, there is a very complex process put in place that enables what? To manage the warehouse, manage the products, and then manage the shipping and delivery. Right? And that is a process and a job and a complexity of its own. It's really hard, it's very difficult. Um, but of course, in this case, uh, I think with, with uh, ASUS, they're building a new fulfillment center, the new uh, warehouse in London as well. They want to have one there. But I think they're building lots of warehouses around the world because why? They want to be as close to big cities as possible. And that's going to help them with their delivery, that's going to help them uh, with customer support that's going to have them with return products, substitutions and things like that. So it's really going to change everything. Uh, speed of delivery, next day, evenings, and now, have you heard that um, eBay, I've tweeted about this as well, eBay is, uh, is uh, experimenting with one hour delivery, within an hour delivery. As soon as you board it, they'll deliver it to you in an hour. Now, how the hell can you do that? Right? It is, it is going to the top of the top of, you know, uh, delivering product as soon as possible to the, to the customer. Now, if they can get that right, it's going to be very hard to, like, compete, even though as a business model and as a uh, service, eBay is not necessarily always the best service. And we've discussed the reasons why, but we can have a longer discussion about it, especially for the companies who want to build the brand. And if you want to build a brand on eBay, eBay is not the place for you. Because you'll never, as a customer on eBay, you'll never know which is the company. You'll know, but you'll never remember which is the company that sold your product. Because you don't care. All you want to do, you're there because you want to get the cheapest price possible and buy. 
You don't care about anything else. Now, as a customer, as a customer, you'll not be remembering much about who's the company that sold you the product. And it can be a really big company. You've got huge companies in eBay who sell you thousands of products. But you never remember. Because all you remember is eBay. So for the business, that's really bad. The first thing is that you've got to go as cheap as possible with your product if you want to sell something. And second, nobody's going to remember that the fact that they bought from you. So how that's going to affect the brand? How that's going to help a company build up a brand online? It's really hard, right? At the same time, squeezing the profit as much as possible because in eBay, it's unlikely to sell something if it's not going to be the cheapest of the cheapest of the cheapest. And just recently, I was, I was uh, trying around with some of the products I wanted to sell online. And you could see that. You could just see. You can't compete with it. You can't compete because you just realize you're just going to give it for free. You might as well give it for free because you've got to compete with the pricing so much that you know you you'll reduce the profit you might have on those products. And I'm sure you can look from your own experience and then see the fact that when you bought something, uh, purchased something on eBay, do you ever remember who was the company that uh, sold you that product? Do you ever remember it? Can I see your hand if you remember? You remember it? Two, three. Okay, you, you do remember who was the company selling you the product apart from using the eBay, yeah? Hmm? Yeah, you'll see that in the invoice, but do you really care much about the invoice? As soon as you see the product, it's going to be like, I mean, just throw it in the bin, I got the product, I like it, that's fine. You know, who cares about that? You know, it's coming from eBay, whatever, there's another company getting it, just forget it. Now, also delivery effect, customer decision, right? Now. There are so many customers online, but also a visa that was done recently, one from a Boston Consulting, one from McKinsey, that found out out of thousands and thousands of customers that customers are more happy to pay extra for a product but not pay for a shipping. That's quite amazing, right? You say, I can give you a cheaper product, but then I'll ask you to pay for, for the shipping. They say, no, no. Give me a more expensive product, but take off the shipping, because I don't want that. It's almost like a trend, right? People just want free shipping. No matter how expensive the product is, they want a free shipping. It's almost like a mindset, right? But it's so interesting to see how this is developing, because I think this can really affect the, any e-commerce website. It will affect every e-commerce website, because not every e-commerce website will have huge volumes in sales. Yeah. I think part of it is people don't like hidden costs. <clears throat> you know, you, you see a price, uh, and then it excludes VAT, so you've got to add that on. And then you've got shipping costs, and then let's say you want to return it, then you have to pay for the return packaging. Well, the packaging is included, but you have to pay for the return cost. I think people prefer it if there aren't things added on. Uh, and you kind of look at the success of Wong Wonga.com. If you look at the APR, it's exorbitant. It's horrendous. Why would anybody go there if you actually look at what you're paying back? Yet because there are no hidden charges, you kind of feel, well, okay, that's the price, I'll agree to it. And there aren't any more hidden charges. So maybe that's a cultural thing in this country. We don't like extra hidden charges. Thank you. I think that's absolutely right when you think about it because it's been, if you think about previous years of services we've received, right? You, you've only understood about hidden costs when you actually dwelled into it yourself. You said, well, oh, how much am I paying for this? How much am I paying for that? How much am I paying for that? Right? Because companies just covered everything for you. You had no idea what you were paying for. And again, I think that is as a result of that, of course. The next one is how are returns handled, right? Now, if you're going to give a free delivery and then somebody's not happy with the, with the product as well, they're going to send it back to you? Well, that's another extra cost, right? So you're just losing money with a free delivery, losing money with dealing with returns. 
how can you afford that, right? Now, if you're a huge giant fish like um, like Amazon, you'll handle it because you've got other sides of the business subsidizing you for the main operation that you're losing money. But with a small, very small business, that becomes a really big problem because that could just kill it. And that's why I think that the idea of having free shipping and of course the trend that is developing, it could be very, very challenging indeed for newcomers into the market. And it's going to be very hard for them to succeed, which is, in a way, it's no good for us because we'll, uh, we'll have less people offering us less uh, products potentially instead of having more companies offering us more products. But we, will, we might be able to kind of uh, have a better choice of, of products as well. So it's something to think about. Now, pricing. Are you making a profit? And this goes back to, this is when you start to look at your business model and start to look at your numbers. Start to look at expenses, shipping, packaging, um, preparing, dealing with returns, all these things. How that's going to affect your, your earnings, right? Of course, these are some of the things that really uh, will affect your pricing too. Now, if you're going to offer a free shipping, and you're selling product at the base price, now, how that's going to work, right? There are lots of companies who will change, bless you, who will change the pricing because they're offering you free shipping. And they increase the pricing just so they can cover, otherwise they won't be making any money. But if you're on eBay, as a business selling, you know, you can't increase that bit of a price because they're going to have 10,000 other companies giving you for at least 50 or 25 percent cheaper than yours, and you're not really just going to buy yours. So price comparison and price and com competitiveness in price, in, in some of these big big e-commerce sites like eBay, it's, it's 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 a very challenging thing, and and I think it's it's something that uh, needs to be looked at. But of course, uh, I don't want to get into that too much now. Um, now, transparency is an essential bit. How many times, how many times you end up going into an e-commerce website where after you've added to the market and you wanted to check out, only then when you confirmed your set or your product, they told you that, oh by the way, you're gonna pay another 10, 15 pounds for a delivery. Right? Or you're gonna have a hidden cost like taxes and things like or VAT or whatever, right? Why are they giving that in the beginning? Why are they not even including that in the price? So all of these things that even Richard, uh, Richard mentioned earlier are really affecting overall customer journey and journey overall conversion rate. Remember, you're trying to sell online. And it was last year when I was tweeting and written an article about the eBay when they had the feature, now they changed, but they had the feature where they asked you to confirm the product, which means you would commit to buy, right? You commit to buy, but you had no idea about the shipping cost. You know what you knew the shipping cost after you confirmed the buy. So there's no you'll have to buy. It's like you committing is actually says in there. You confirming to buy, you've got to commit now. And that was last year feature that they had, right? And then after that, you will especially if you buy outside UK, that means especially if you buy from China or US, that means Another 25, 35 pounds of the shipping cost that will be added to your overall price, to the, to the cost of that product. And you say, what? I bought the product for like 15 pounds? I'm going to pay 20 pounds to get it delivered to my house? No, I don't want that. But of course, you can't change your mind now because you confirm the price. Can you confirm that you're going to buy? And that was really annoying because I've tested out with several products, and it kept happening the same thing. And they, they, they slightly changed now, but all of these hidden ways of trying to convert you and then give you very, very cheap prices without introducing you to other extra costs you have after it, it's, it's, it's a killer for a customer. And it's probably, eBay is not my choice of, of shopping online. I probably, I, I use it from time, but it's not my choice. 
for very specific reasons I mentioned earlier from a business perspective as well. Because I'm an entrepreneur myself and having to fight for a price when you know you've got good quality product, it's, 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 it's a very painful thing. Right? When you know, it's like, it's like trying to compete, it's like you're Apple and you're trying to sell your iPhone and you're trying to compete with all other worst devices out there on the price and have to give it cheaper than any other much worse device than the, than the iPhone. That would be ridiculous. Okay, uh, the other thing that affects, affects the, of course, the pricing is, of course, uh, uh, suppliers give, will sell you the product with a specific price, then you start to work out how much you can sell that for, how much is going to be your cost, delivery, packaging, and things like that, and what is the expected profit margin on the product. And that's when you start to see real numbers. That's when you're going to decide whether you should go into that business or not. And if you ever talk to the people who invest in business, businesses like angel investors or like a, a big company that invests into new businesses, they'll ask at least, they'll want data, they'll want numbers, they'll want to see how much they'll, they'll get in return. When is that overall return investment or break even point for the business? We want to have this discussion, but I'm not going to do that now. We can do that in our tutorial because we don't have time. The shopping cart basket journey. Of course, there are all sorts of things that um, uh, are going to affect the overall customer journey, but an ability to have a shopping basket that is synced, synchronized, updated, however you want to call it, with the real, with the real stock that you've got available is going to be absolutely essential. Now, of course, the other thing is providing reassurance as customers start to add things into the website, into the basket, you start to reassure them that everything they're about to do now, from this point on, is safe and secure. So, in other words, at that moment is that when, you, when the, the journey becomes a lot more sensitive for the customer. That's when you start to think about giving you their names, their credit card details, and things like that. So you've got to make that as comfortable as possible and reassuring them throughout that journey, throughout that time. And of course, as I said to you earlier, it's absolutely essential that these, these uh, products and these uh, browsing histories that you've got online need to be able to be synced well with a shopping basket. Now, if you look at uh, ASOS, as I said, you know some of the things might have slightly changed, but it's pretty much uh, the same from earlier this year. When you look at the shopping basket, you start to look at the details. It shows you how many things you've got in the basket and and how much the total is in the back, right? So, you, you, it's saying you can also obviously save some of the things that you've been uh, serving online, but they won't be in the basket, right? They'll just be there as saved items. The next, of course, is the shopping bag in general. It gives you an overall idea about what are you buying. I haven't bought this coat though. It looks quite nice, but uh, I, might, I might need to get back and check what they have got available. Now, um, you see, you've got, you've got the clear description about the product, the size, You've got the delivery options and everything else. It also gives you the uh, payment option for, for the website. And of course, it shows you delivering options that you've got. If you want to say money, get it for free, all of that. And then payment options. So it just gives you a clear idea throughout. So it gives you these touching points in the customer journey. Touch points that, that I normally call, where are reassuring for the customer. It also gives you a clear idea of what you're about to buy. And so you say, and that, that's very clever. Pay securely now, that's quite comfortable, comfortable, isn't it? So it's quite, quite nice to see that. And it also gives you an idea about free delivery and how they uh, deal with returns and everything else. Search, again, we've talked about this. I don't want to get into my details, but search needs to be indexed and well integrated within the website. That's when Google took a very important step uh, some years ago to enable their search feature for the website to be used by other 
by other uh, third-party websites as well. So you can actually integrate a search Google enabled by, by them into your website, which will index everything you got in the server, and it will work brilliantly well for the website. And there are so many companies who use who use uh, the search feature uh, uh, JavaScript from Google that is integrated into the website that enables you to use their uh, brilliant search uh, engine. Now, when it comes to ASOS, again, we talked about being able to what? Manage merchandising, man managing what you've got available, frequency of updates, how many times you can update with a product, working with suppliers, how well are you going to do that? Of course, personalize to each client. Now, this is very important, and they do quite a good job, because if I go and sign in with my account now, you'll be able to see that what they're offering me is actually quite, quite spot on. You know, I could easily go and buy, because what they're offering me is normally what I buy, and the things that I like. So, it's so well synchronized with my personal history that it does make it quite easy for me to buy, enjoyable, and I can see new, uh, I don't know, new clothing line that they're presenting that I might be interested to buy. And of course, search facility works fantastically well, supporting navigation, as you can see, you can get straight to what you're looking for, uh, whether supporting help, browsing very easily, and of course, it shows you favorite brand they work with. Now, as soon as you see that, you get a feel that what you're going to search in this website is actually going to be quite useful, quite neat, and you, you might end up getting some quite good products as well because there's some big brands in there. Types of you can see security. Uh, they talk about security, they talk about uh, fraud protection and also continuous kind of reassuring that what you're trying to do is fine and then what happens of course with dealing with failures, what happens when you purchase something of course they haven't charged with a credit card but you received a confirmation you, you start to worry about the fact that they might have charged you but they didn't and so that's also another thing to be thinking about voucher codes and legal issues so these are some of the things to keep in mind when it comes to the payment Now, again, another thing that you could do when it comes to the marketing, of course, what they do, they pro provide very personalized uh, uh, email newsletters that they send all the time. So when I look at my newsletter, it's actually quite, quite spot on. So in other words, it gives me the things that I might be interested to buy. So in other words, I could very likely become a, a really big spender on ACES website. Because what they're giving me sometimes a bit too often, like every single day, well, I'm not going to buy every single day. Uh, but uh, again, it's, they, what they're offering is quite good. Of course, they have got a very well synchronized social presence where they offer different types of uh, clothing lines to, the, to, the, to, the, to their visitors. And now, I think this is taken from my page in ASOS, and it just it just shows that some of the things that I bought, they worked out pretty much well what I could be interested in, right? And so, as soon as I go there, they'll give me a, a page where it shows some of the things that I might be interested to buy, right? So it's so well tailored with my buying history that, you know, I'll look at it and I'm like, well, I can see some good things in there. I'll probably like that shirt there. I can like, well, like the pants. And so, yeah, there are some good things in there which I might be willing to, to buy, right? And this is an opportunity, and that's why they've got a very fantastic uh, uh, e-commerce platform. They keep redesigning and, and improving. Of course, a really neat feature in here when it comes to, to signing up is that they say, okay, provide us with email, but we never know where you're male or female, so tell us. Male or female, right? Tell us who you are. So we can work out. So we have a very neat little feature in there. It gives us an opportunity to know who are these customers. Because with the email, it's hard to tell, right? Especially with the email like 2355 at hotmail.com. You know? And it's just no way you can tell uh, whether that's a male or female. Of course, customer service is, is really brilliant. And what they have that is so nice 
is is uh, FAQs, frequently asked question. They're very up to date. They show you most questions on how to deal with returns, how to deal with payments, uh, and also they have a very good presence in social media, which helps the business a lot. And help and contact. And this is this is like a really good sliding feature in their in their uh, search for support. And as soon as you start to rolling over and do different questions, they give you the answers, and that's quite useful. Innovation, business model, frequent shop, personalization, they've got iPhone app, mobile site, internet pricing, they can see, continually let you know that these are some of the key things that make them special and they make, make them quite innovative. And of course, all of them are part of their business model that set, sits within, within this framework. And of course, many, well, almost every year they win awards for being the best of the shop, shopping experience online. And uh, that is quite, quite interesting, quite cute. Thank you very much indeed. And if you have any questions, please ask me.